God, this is perfect. Welcome, everyone. Hi, we're here today for uh, a, a holiday special edition of Arts Lunch. This is uh, for the Signature Theater. Uh, this is the cast of Paradise Blue. Paradise, Paradise Blue. Paradise Blue, baby. Blue in the house. An incredible Blue. play uh, written by Dominique Moriso. Yes. I feel so silly trying to say all of these things <laughs> with my nose clamped together. Nose uh, but it was produced at the Signature in 2018 and directed by Ruben Santiago Hudson, who you can all know by uh, checking out Ma Rady when it opens in Netflix. It's going to release it soon, I think. This Friday. <clears throat> um, so I really enjoyed, I'm going to take this off now because <laughs> everything feels suffocated, but I really enjoyed doing the show. Uh, when we all did it together, it was a really special experience for me. Um, and I think it was for you guys as well. Yes, um, and wow. I thought about it so often, especially since March. Um, I don't know. It just feels like something that if it resurfaced now, I'm so curious as to how people would respond to it, uh, um, compared to 2018. But um, I don't know. How are you guys feeling being back together? And how have you been holding up in this time? Oh, wait, let me introduce everybody, just in case people don't know. Uh, Keith Randolph Smith, raise your hand. He's on this side of me. <laughs> That's Keith Randolph Smith. And he played the character of Corn in Paradise Blue. Mm -hmm. On this side of me is Francois Baptiste. Let's see, you play P. Sam. Uh, and then below me, I have Simone Missick who played uh, Silver. And then right over here, I have Alphonse Nicholson, J. Alphonse Nicholson, who played Blue. What's up, guys? Yay. And ladies, everybody. And who did you play, Crystalline? And I'm Crystalline Lloyd, and I played something. Yes, you did. Right. Um, so, but yeah, talk to me. Keith, how are you doing? Oh, uh, I'm hanging in there. Uh, it's been a wild and crazy time uh, trying to adjust to being inside a lot. Um, that was the biggest adjustment. Because mm -hmm. I'm just used to going out every day and exercising, walking, you know, meeting people, hugging people. And I uh, haven't been able to do that. But uh, it's been all good because uh, we live in this age of uh, Zoom and Google Chat and FaceTime, so I still see people, so it's wonderful. Right? It's so great that we can still get together with people that are our family. It's not in the capacity that it was before, and I'm really hoping that we won't have to adjust to it too much longer, because um, it's just not natural. Right. <clears throat> um, Francois, how are you guys doing? Uh, much like Brother Keith said, you know, uh, I wasn't used to being locked up inside the house uh, and when it's compounded with uh, three little ones who get cabin fever and you have to get them out. Um, so you, there's a delicate dance that you, you need to keep them safe, but you got to get them out. Um, it's been you tough, but it's also, say again? I feel like you guys do such a great job of that. You're, you, uh, you post, by the, post pictures, by the, you guys are out and you know, stuff that I would be like, yeah, it doesn't take much just to go watch, like, go see Christmas lights or, you know, you guys love going to the park. It's We got yeah. to. We got to. That's that's what they they crave and they, they deserve as kids. Uh, but at the same time, it's all about the grace of God. And we are, um, you know, we're homeschooling uh, like other parents out there. And, I, you know, when things like this happen, you really got to flip it on its head and, and find the gratitude in it. And, uh, you know, a couple of gigs that were lined up, you know, those got taken away because a lot of gigs got taken away from other people. And um, but the flip side of that is that I get to be present. You know, I get to be home. Um, and these, this is time that I'll never get back. You know, you can't rewind the clock. And I'm, you know, uh, present for every development step of the way. So. I'm just grateful. And like you guys said, you know, the technology allows us to reach out and we're doing tons of FaceTime with grandparents and things like that. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a blessing on, on some levels. I love hearing that because you, you're such an intentional person, like a soul. Um, that's one thing. I remember we had this conversation about somebody I had been spending time with, like a dude while we were doing Paradise Blue. 
and you mm -hmm. said and you said uh you said something about his intentions feel opaque that's the color i would give <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So In my part time, I write cards for Hallmark. Um, I don't know where I got that, but it just seemed like it was just uh, it's it wasn't very bold, you know. You know, you understood. You said, you said the colors aren't bold enough for me there. Right. right. <laughs> so I apologize for speaking that flowery language. I appreciated it. I <laughs> Hi, Jay Alphonse Nicholson. How are you doing? Jay Alphonse, Crystal, what's up? We have a family here. How y'all doing? Ah, man? Good, ah, good, bro. Y'all good? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Good. How you good holding up? Got married. Oh man, I like like my brother just said, man. I'm 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 blessed, man. It's one of those weird things where um, you know, I came into 2020 and it it was already set up to kind of be one of the best years of my life, you know, and of my career, and uh, so. Um, fortunately, I was able to sustain and move forward with a lot of things. And then at the same time, lost a lot of uh, opportunities as well. Um, and, and so a lot of my time has been spent trying to, you know, like Francois said, spend the time with family, uh, homeschooling. You know, my son uh, is nine years old. My stepdaughter just turned 15 yesterday. Um, you Happy know, birthday. I oh, can't, I can't. Birthday. They have such a young, like sexy, talented dad. Like it's just must be oh, so thank <laughs> even though they're looking at you like Yeah. <laughs> Hey, my son, man, you know, the, the, Francois, you'll see this too as you continue to, you know, come, you know, you're, old, you're, I think, slightly older than me, but in fatherhood, my son and my daughter are a little older, but there's this weird thing that happens where your son starts looking at you like, yeah, you cool, but I'm cooler, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying, yeah, you know, so uh, we're yeah, kind of going through that stage right now where it's like, pops, man, you, you just pops, dog. You you get on my, I don't exactly. care about all the, the celebrity stuff, like, I, so it, it's interesting, but I, I do think I am a cool dad and my stepdaughter, she thinks I'm pretty cool. We we got a lot in common. Um, so I, I've been blessed to spend a lot of time with my family, um, my mother and my sister. No one's gotten sick. Um, unfortunately, I did lose some family to COVID, though, close cousins. And, you know, um, that's when it really hits home when somebody that's 32 years old passes away from COVID uh, because they... Uh, they have diabetes or they just, just don't have the care uh, resources to get to the care they need. And so I, that kind of how I was affected by it. Um, but still at the same time, just uh, acknowledging the fact that it's like, yeah, I'm very privileged right now, you know, to have like a couple series, TV series come out in COVID and people at home able to watch them. And so hopefully that propels a, a larger 2021. Um, but at the same time, just knowing that, you know, this could happen again. How do I prepare myself for the next time we have a pandemic or, or something like that? So um, just trying to work at all angles, but at the same time, uh, indulge in, in what we can do, like these FaceTimes and, and these Zoom uh, meetings and stuff like that. And um, I, I ain't gonna lie, sometimes you'll forget like, damn, I had a Zoom meeting today. Now you jumping on there, you rush, you trying to get yourself together. Whereas in New York, you know, you gotta be uh, prepared and on time getting out the door. And uh, so, and I moved to LA during the pandemic, uh, right after, you know, we finished Soldiers Play, uh, I was like, man, it's gonna get bad here in New York. So me and my lady was looking at getting a place in LA and we, we got a place and was able to move, which is kind of crazy too, moving during the pandemic. But um, so extremely blessed, it, it, like Francois said, on some levels, but at the same time experiencing uh, similar or, or same hardships as, as everybody else. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, <laughs> I, you know, I've seen you do so much now, I feel like. Uh, oh, when I saw P Valley, the way I twerked for your character, <laughs> me and my roommate, we were just, like, I, I don't, I'm sure, and I feel like anytime I brought up the show and, and your character specifically, like that has been the feeling, you know? And that is a controversial character. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, especially like our people, that is a divide. That will divide people. Um, but you do it, oh, with so much truth and just you're dropped Thank in. You. Have you guys seen it? Have you guys seen uh, it? Yeah. <sighs> Thank you. Thank Got me you. Many, many weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it, it's a very complicated character, man. I, I'm shout out to Katori Hall and uh, shout out to Dominique because I met Katori through Dominique when she came to see Paradise Blue. Dorian um, was, was sitting behind Katori mm -hmm. when that when she saw you for the first time, and he was like. Uh. Hey, I think she asked if if he was my cousin or something yeah, like that. Like, <laughs> but you know, it don't be too many black people sitting no. up in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I and I love it because you play complicated characters very well. You find uh, the truth immediately, and that's just uh, I just was it was it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Um, I'm gonna stop gushing. Uh, someone else who also has a show. Me and my mom sat down to watch All Rise. Aww. And it just brought me so much joy. It did, Simone, it did. Thank you, friend. Thank How you. are you holding up? I'm doing good. Yesterday, day before yesterday was my technically last day of work mm -hmm. um, for the holiday season, which is still not my last day of work because you still owe ADR and, you know, somebody's gonna call you up and say, can you voice a promo for the week? which is an interesting thing, but you know, for me, when we went into lockdown, we were shooting and um, it was a really scary time. Like it was terrifying because every day that like led up to it, I wanna say that we might've wrapped on a, on a Wednesday. And so Monday was like, you could feel like there's this wave that was coming and mm -hmm. everybody is like, how do we prepare for this wave? Like, what are we doing? And so the adjustment on set was like, we're gonna wipe everything down and everybody wash your hands. That was all we had at that moment. There was no like, everybody should be wearing a mask. We should be keeping distance. And so there, had, there was like that. And then Tuesday was that moment where everybody was like, okay, what are we doing? Like, and we had like a little meeting with the, with the producers on set, mm -hmm. with the whole crew. And they said, go home. And if you hear something by 11 o'clock, don't head to set. And so everybody is like sitting, waiting, you know, overnight. Sure enough, by 11 a.m. the next morning, we got the message that said we're shutting down, you know, due to the pandemic. I rushed to the grocery store and, and just loaded up everything because I was like, we're staying in the house for the next year like this is gonna be insane. Right. Right. um and thank god dorian was here you know because he works in new york and i work in la and he was already here and so we we started out on that wednesday like day drinking and having fun like we just gonna get through this and by friday my mother-in-law had COVID, and by the next week she was in the hospital and by a few days into it she was on a ventilator and so the, the beginning of this for me was a completely different experience. I spent, until she got home or I, until she got off the ventilator, I spent that whole time fasting. And so it was weird because I, you know, you, you have to take in something, news, social media, whatever. And you see people living their life because this is still the beginning. So people right. were discovering TikTok. And I'm like, there are people dying. You know what I mean? Like in my mind, but then you have, to, you have to rationalize that people have to deal with this in whatever way they have to, um, in order to survive what was this like life changing, something that none of us had ever experienced before. Um, and so I said to myself, if I don't come out of this stronger spiritually, I have wasted my time. Mm. So I have a Bible study group with my girlfriends and we sat for like two months, just studied Psalm 91 because I knew I was going to have to go back to work at some point or go back out into the world before there was a vaccine or a cure or a treatment. And I couldn't live in fear that every time I stepped out of my door, or every time I opened my door to a grocery delivery or to a mail person that I am going to die. And so we worked that word. And then I had, you know, Bible study with another group of women that was just like a lot of prayer. And then because of my mother-in-law's um, illness, we had started a three time a day Zoom, uh, excuse me, phone call mm -hmm. with her pastor, 
and with the family. And so we would pray while she was in the hospital. She got out, it got down to two times a day. Then it became once a day. And now we do it twice a week. We do a Zoom on Tuesdays. And then we do a Zoom where we play Black Card Revoked on Fridays. Yes. Every week since the beginning of COVID. And as a result of that, with my family that lives here, we do a Zoom every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my family, my brother, my aunt, my parents, they all live here. Normally we would go visit each other, but because I'm going to work, it's like, I don't want to, you know, mm -hmm. possibly expose them. And then they're older, they're, you know, compromised health conditions. It is, it is a balance right now. And how to be responsible in this yeah. time. And our families are so important, you know? When I went home to Texas for Thanksgiving, we had a couple cousins stop by and we were in that house, everyone masked up. Mm -hmm. And I had just gotten, I had just tested positive, uh, negative for COVID. So there wasn't a ton of fear because I had gotten it back in February. Mm -hmm. So I haven't had a ton of fear about uh, catching it, mainly passing it on. And it was when I was home with my family that I was like, I have a responsibility to not just protect like my family, but like everybody, right. even if just wearing the mask brings some people a peace of mind. Cause I know I have antibodies. I know I already had it, but I don't, even if I don't can't give it to someone, I don't want people having to have anxiety while they're out getting groceries, you know, <laughs> like. Just so like, how has this time been for you, Crystal? Oh, um, this time has been, I was, uh, I immediately got a job. When I got back from doing a show in Seattle, I was like, well, I should just pick up like a babysitting job because I had two more gigs later in the year. But I was like, let me just pick up a job for the next couple weeks. And that job, obviously, <laughs> um, I, they've kept me. It was a medical family and they have this really cute three-year-old boy and uh, he's four now. Uh, and he and I have been together most of this time it's just wild to like be babysitting a young white boy you know in the midst of this racial upheaval and he has been such a palate cleanser for me because we have the most simple conversations some days and then other days he was like uh am i a boy or a girl and i'm like yeah. you're four i was like let's wait till mom gets off of work <laughs> <laughs> but uh so that's how I've been hanging together because um it gives me something to do and it gives my brain something to accomplish because one thing I'm realizing is that we have we are having as artists to be really responsible for our the free time we have and uh so I'm really grateful for a holiday break I'm not gonna lie I told my agency I said I'm booked out the rest of the week <laughs> I need a little break mm -hmm. uh Cause I'm going to decorate my Christmas tree later. Aww. How have, how has everyone been enjoying zoom? Thanks. Uh, auditions <laughs> now that we uh, don't that, have to go into room. Yeah. Luckily I haven't had to do any, I, I've had some zoom meetings for sure, which is, um, sometimes like, man, you want to be in the room with uh, certain people for sure, but I haven't had any zoom auditions just so self tape, you know, it's kind of been the name of the game and I prefer that anyway. So it's, uh, it, it works out for the ratio of booking works out a little better. Um, <laughs> so today I upped my self tape um, situation. It's just, I'm, I can do it by myself. I can do a, a whole, uh, my friend put out this video of how to do a, um, the, the slate mm -hmm, where you have yeah. to do your name, your full body slate. She showed how to do like a split screen side by side. So you could put like a full length photo of yourself and then you have a small video box of yourself talking. I'm Crystal and Lloyd, 5-4 New York City. And all the while there's this picture of you. Uh, like, it revolutionized my self tape. <laughs> Cause before were you trying to like, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so far back, you can't even see me. <laughs> Go out the room down the hall. You get the full yeah. vibe. Yeah. Really yeah. hung herself up. I think she did. I think she Presley, you dropped, dropped your phone. camera, girl. She uh, dropped the phone and hung herself up. I already know it. Know it. What happened to my? Now we take it over. 
He said she <laughs> somebody let her back in. Don't, don't let her yeah. back in. You take over, Francois. Come on, come on. What are we doing today? I ain't got bro, nothing to bro, say, bro, man. Daddy, I was just gonna add to what y'all were talking about. I ain't got nothing really. You know, crazy to 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 say about what we doing now, man. But, there she uh, go. <laughs> there she is. Ha! Ah, there she go. I'm back. Um, keep going, Francois. What were you saying? Nothing. I ain't saying nothing. Uh, I was well. I was gonna piggyback on what Jay was saying about uh, no real Zoom uh, auditions, but that that self taping thing is for us. It's just about you know who's gonna watch these 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 <laughs> these the brood. While we we so a lot of times it's it's late at night, man, and Ooh. it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. Uh, I mean, not, we are we are night owls. Yeah, we are nocturnal beings, but at the same time, they not. <laughs> daddy, daddy, no. daddy, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> real real talk, man. <laughs> um, and, and I just. Go ahead, Jay. No, I was just gonna say my condolences to Francois and 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 uh and my, my boy uh, Keith Randolph too for Chisholm. I know you guys spent so much time with him uh over this past year, and um that's a that was a huge loss to our entire community. So much much love to him. But uh, I know you guys knew him probably on a totally different level at this point than a lot of us. So um just my condolences to you guys on that. Too. I appreciate that, brother. I'm gonna let Keith speak sure. to that, but uh that's yeah. that's definitely uh yeah, I feel you, man. Thank you very much for that. I'm gonna let Keith oh. keep keep history with Cheers go back many, many decades. Man, the one of a kind, a living yeah. legend, unique, uh soulful. Yeah, man, you can't you can't you ask Chisholm every time you see him, like, how you doing, Chisholm? I'm, I'm grateful. grateful. No matter what day, what time, I'm grateful. That's the lesson he taught. Yeah. yeah. Then gratitude. Yeah. I'm going to take that yeah. with me. Cheers. Cheers lived a heck of a life. He lived three lifetimes, uh, all in one. And um, he, like, like Keith said, he always walked with gratitude and he never um, let you forget that God is in charge. And that you know, I we were up in Seattle. I'm listening to you, Simone, and I'm thinking about we were up in Seattle when COVID hit, mm. and around. that ground yeah. zero. Yeah, right. That's that's where it really kind of like popped, and uh, I just remember like hitting that grocery store and trying to, you know, I got my family out here. You know, we when we gonna get back to California, like the what is happening to our world you know everything was just and at the same time you know we, we we're, we're dealing with the the tour being cut short um and just trying to be there for each other um i'm grateful for that that those months with those beautiful human beings but chisholm man um he, he's just one of a kind who are like that with y'all say again so I just, I just, it just something about knowing that he spent his life like enduring a tour. Tours are, those are exhausting, you know. Yeah, but something about Chiz when we started rehearsal, see, it was like seven, eight months, and a tour. The tour was seven, eight months, and when we started, Chiz was much more frail, and we were all worried. Like, is he going to be able to to continue? Is he going to be able to, you know, uh, pull out all of the the type of uh, the longevity that you're gonna need for this this type of tour, and he got stronger. Like with every performance, he got stronger, and it was like watching him because he had some surgery a couple of years ago, and you know it was like watching him morph before our eyes. It, it, he, he that I don't know if you guys I saw him play that part 20 years ago when I was little little uh, Jerry Her Jerry Curl hit kid in in, in Chicago, and he. And Keith, um, they they ripped it up. I mean, Anthony Chisholm's feet never touched the ground. What mm. he was doing on that stage was miraculous. I've never seen anything like it before or since. He, you know, and he's in the African American Museum down there in D.C. Um, they got his picture up there, man, and it deservedly so because he is one of a kind. He is singular. His talent was I couldn't I, to this day. Him, Stephen McKinley Henderson, what they did on that stage 
uh, it's it's imprinted in my mind. It's etched in my memory, you know. And uh, to sure see him 20 years all. later, just right. take on a new persona anyway. I'm sure all of you guys gave him, like infused him with life. With yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. And your kids were on a lot of that tour. Yeah, they they referred to him as Mr. Chisholm. There you go. And Mr. Chisholm would sit down to talk to him and ask him questions and they would ask him questions. Oh. And it became a family, it really became a family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, you know, he'll tell you, strap your seatbelt on. You know, and, and you know, put God first, strap your seatbelt on, and enjoy the ride. <laughs> but uh, thank, thank y'all for sharing that, man. I knew it, you would have some. Uh, just mentioning his name always brings a story out. Or I'm glad he got a chance to come see his soldiers play uh, while yeah. we were doing it, which was great. Um, but I, I knew, you know, that the same way. I mean, I look at you, gentlemen, like that, sharing a, a dressing room with you for the months that we had. And, yep. uh, you know, being able to do it multiple times with Keith uh, on, on a Dominique Bariso project. And so mm -hmm. I'll never forget, Keith would write me these little notes every day uh, yep. while, we, while we were doing uh, Sunset Baby. And some of them, you know, he'd be talking shit on some of them, but the other ones, they'd be really <laughs> wonderful really messages. Wise. Really yeah. wise, man. I got y'all remember Keith brought all them books to Paradise Blue, and you could just go and pick a book and, and take yeah. it home with you. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I had yeah, to move. I, I, I had to get rid of some of them books. <laughs> in the green room, man. <laughs> Y'all remember when uh, Simone was going to shut it down? Well, let's not talk about that. Um, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, we got, we got going on. The, the air get in here. It's hot. <laughs> You know, I have, oh, I have a good memory of forgetting a lot of stuff. So I'm with you. I'm you with probably you. tell me, and I'd be like, I did that. So I oh. talk about it. And, 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 and Crystal, and what did you used to have in the in the refrigerator? We had a whole. What y'all had? What, was it ice cream or yogurt? It don't you know? matter. I had groceries. That's we had groceries. Point. Okay. We had bags of groceries. Uh, I'm known for that. I have to have access to as much food as I want when I'm working on a project. I'm like, I don't ever need to be hungry in front of people because it's not good. <laughs> you, would, you would bring those little sodas and I would always, I'd be like, yo, can I, can I grab one of them sodas? Little quads, right? Little quads, yeah. Yes. Yes, I, I, I enjoy sharing and I enjoy sharing, especially with you people. So I do remember those memories were fun. I'd sit out there and try and watch Keith and Francois play chess, and I just, I just was not made for chess. <laughs> Between Jim and Aww, not really. We'd be moving pieces. We'd be like, hold, hold, hold. I did watch the Queen's Gambit, uh, but I would have, I would have loved to have watched a TV show about Keith and Francois playing chess. Playing chess. Uh, it'd be a short series. <laughs> Is, are you coming for Keith, Francois? What you no, are you putting them Smackdowns on me on the regular? <laughs> I was a glutton for punishment. Um, no, no, Keith, Keith, Keith would do something like you'd be like, "Wait, what he do that for?" And then you'd be like, and then he come around, smack you in the back of your head while taking your queen. You'd be like, "Oh, he, oh, he know what he doing." He was he steps ahead doing. of you. He was steps yeah. ahead of you. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of games, uh -oh. I thought it would be fun to play um, a little version of. I hope I put this on right. I think this is right. Family Feud. All right, here you go. Yeah, the stack. Uh, Steve Harvey mustache. All right. Uh, team one will okay. be. <laughs> I don't want it to fall off. Team one will be Miss Simone Missick and Mr. Keith Randolph Smith. Yes. And All right. Yes, the winning combo. Yes. <laughs> y'all said we supposed to. Uh, put that smack we down supposed on to Hold on a second. I'll let you know. Keith, so the yeah. second team is going to be Francois and Alphonse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to do the first round, and I'm going to uh, have uh, Francois, <laughs> the young bucks over there. I'm going to have. Y'all are both the dads, too. So, you know, remember, mm -hmm. you got to set an example. That means we know how to beat that. <laughs> All three of them. Uh, you got to learn how to lose gracefully. Oh, you know what? So, Francois and Alphonse, they, we're gonna, what we're doing is a lightning round. So, it's that last uh, round where you have to answer a question. You have to at least get the top. And I'll add up the scores and we'll go from there. But this is like a home edition, okay? This is a DIY version. Get into okay. it. 
I need <laughs> Francois and Alphonse yeah. to mute, turn off their cameras, and turn down the audio on their computer. Uh -oh. You can see okay. it. Down. So they can see us here and uh, they won't be able to hear us though. And I'll give them the signal to come back in. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna set my little timer. <laughs> I feel so bad for y'all. They have to lose if they don't cheat. Go ahead on, Simone, get them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my questions. Are y'all ready? Uh, yes. And, and ready to go roaring. How y'all feeling today? Mm -hmm. Good, Steve. It's up there, Steve. Steve. It's up there. You think so? All right. Simone, the question for you, because Simone, you get one question and Keith gets a different question. Okay. So Simone, the question for you, you had 30 seconds to uh, get as many answers as possible. Let's remember her answers. And uh, if they're up there, you'll get the points. Okay? Okay. So the question is, Name a word or phrase that begins with the word hot. Okay. A word or phrase that begins with the word hot and your time begins. 30 seconds? Yes. Okay. Now. Hot mama, hot tamales, hot and ready, hot girls, hot and cold, in hot water. Hot cocoa. Okay. Hot pizza. <laughs> Hot. Time's up. Thank you. <laughs> that was good. How many did you have? How many was that? Yeah. I had eight. 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 Okay. So Simone, you had one on the board, and that was hot tamale. That's it? Who were the 100 people you surveyed for this? <laughs> for real. Come on now, Steve. Um, we'll see the rest of the possibilities next time. So, Simone, you, you have eight points with hot tamale. That is nice. OK. Uh, Keith, uh -oh. your question, 30 put, seconds on the clock. Put me on the timer. OK. <laughs> Oh, I see you. Name a complaint the older generation has about the younger generation. Okay? How so would I know? <laughs> <laughs> Ready? And begin. Uh, complaint older generation. You don't listen. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Why are you wearing that? Okay. Uh, um, uh, slow down. Okay. Um, uh, uh, how you know? That's a question, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Time. Oh. Get going, though. Keep, good. Keep, you had two answers on the board. See? What? You got, one of the answers is bad driving. Bad driving? That was five points. Oh. Add that to Simone's eight. And then the other one you got, you said uh, something about clothes. Mm -hmm. Why are you wearing that? That's 25. Well, Woo! come on. Hey, <laughs> <up>. 25. <laughs> All right, y'all. We going to bring them back in. Yeah, we got yeah. 38 points. Come we going to laugh. They going to read it and weep. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, all right. right. That, okay. I've been, been cheating. I've been, been cheating. Why? Because I couldn't hear smiling enough. like that. <laughs> we don't trust smiling, fuck. Uh, it looked like y'all was having a good time, but I couldn't hear you. Call 911. It's like you about to whoop something. All right. Same questions. Uh, who would like to go first on uh, this team? Francois, you go first, man. Rack up the points. Okay. All right. No steps back. Let's get let's get going. Francois, your question is: name a word or phrase that begins with the word "hot." Your time hot. begins now. Hot chocolate. Hot. Hot cakes. Hot tamale. Hot. Damn. Hot damn. Uh, <laughs> hot and fresh, hot and hot 
hot, hot, hot. <laughs> it's hot in here. Um, it's hot. Uh, oh Lord, hot, you're rapping. Hot, <laughs> you're done. Hot mama, hot mama. That's it. Did That's I say it. that already? Okay, so good job, Francois. You had three of them on the board. What? Hot chocolate. <laughs> Crystal Hot chocolate. Oh, you could take those points, Simone. Okay, you can take some of those points too. I'll give you six points for it. Francois right. got six, you got six more. Yeah, 38 plus six, that's 44, keep going. Okay, uh, hot tamales. He had hot tamales, so Francois, six plus eight. Uh, you also said hot cake, which is is uh, is one. So that's 14 what? more points. Yeah, I don't know about them hot cakes. Oh, you do. Oh. <laughs> So the other options were that weren't called. Yeah, let's hear this. Ones. The let's top hear this. one was hot dog. Oh! Neither y'all said hot dog. Damn. Hot potatoes. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Hot stuff. Mm. And hot hands. Ah, yeah. You right, Kristen. Oh. That was a good, that, yep. Hot dog, that was good, that was good. Okay, all right. You got your points added up, Francois, J. Alphonse. Y'all know how many points you got? No, you said three, right. so 18. So you have uh, six plus eight plus 14. Oh, oh, that's 24. That's 30. Yeah. All right. Uh, then, 28. 20. 28. 28. 28. All right. Eight plus four. Y'all adding that right. It might I'm, be not, I'm not a math. I'm not a math. Plus two for the bonus. 14 plus 14. Plus 14, plus 14 plus points. Hey, plus boys. two for the bonus because she gave Simone extra points <laughs> after the fact, so we get a no. We, we get a little bump. We get a little All right, bump. it's your turn, Jay. All right, let's do it. Uh -oh. Jay, name a complaint the older generation has about the younger generation. Your time begins okay. now. Too much social media. Okay. Um, sagging the pants. Uh -huh. Yeah. Cr crazy hairstyles. Uh -huh. Um, too much smoking and drinking. Um, too much time out at the club. Um, don't know how to close the door. You staying in or staying out? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you better um make sure you clean before you leave this house. Um, uh, time. That was that's good. good, man. Yeah, yeah, let's try. Old people yell at you. <laughs> this is my job. We can my job with y'all. I know he got about 10 on them. <laughs> Pick some. Okay, so you did get hairstyles. So add five more points to your score. Who who got the calculator on their phone? 33. Okay. Uh -huh. You did said uh close the door, letting things in here. Uh, that so that falls under no respect. Okay. And rude. So that's 20 points. I know. 53. I know. I know. And then he talked about baggy clothes. So I got to give him points for clothes, which is 25. They won. Oh, yeah. No, 70, 78. 70, no. No, 75. So the top yeah. answers for this, for this question were music. Then it came clothes. Come on, little murder. How you ain't know about that music? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. And you're a drummer. He's also a drummer. I know, man. I should have got that one. Um, No Respect Rude was the third one. Lazy was 15 points. Hairstyle and then bad driving. Bad driving. I'm proud of y'all. That was a wonderful version of Family Feud. Thank y'all for coming out. Good to see you. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, Kristen, oh, right. uh, say who, tell recount. everybody who won. Well, now, uh, it appears that. To <laughs> Come on, man. Don't, don't be like that. that was... All the electoral votes. Can we do a recount? <laughs> he wants to start the recount for the recount. <laughs> We could do a recount. We could pull out the signature theater board to verify. We got to wait till January 20 to find out. Uh -oh. <laughs> Congratulations. They got to drag, to... drag Keith out the Zoom room and let you count. Yeah, right. I don't believe it.
<laughs> Congratulations to Gina Bond and it. Francois Baptiste win. Uh, Simone Lewis and Keith Randolph, y'all played real well. I'm a gracious loser. I freaking miss y'all so much. Uh, <laughs> Um, that was fun um, oh, guys this was really great i'm glad that we did this um i hope you know those of you who are out there <laughs> watching these shenanigans also enjoyed yourself um i think i want to make sure I, I cover everything before we sign off yeah this is uh this is a wonderful holiday edition yeah. of arts lunch at the signature with the, the past right, on. right on right on to all Thank of the signature family stay safe have a blessed holiday season. Hold on to your loved ones. Yes, and, indeed. And wear your mask. 2021. Well, love y'all. Love y'all. I love y'all too. Thanks for doing this, y'all. Peace. Cut.